Hey guys, Josh Carter here with One Objective. In today's video, we're going to be talking about trolling motor batteries and what is the best battery for your setup. So stay tuned. All right, guys, like I said, we're going to be going over the right battery size for the setup that you have on your kayak. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, I'm not going to say it's incorrect, but I feel like that it's uh, somewhat can steer you in the wrong direction and cost you a lot of money and possibly uh, be, be a safety issue while out on the water. So let's kind of dig in and talk about uh, what is going to be the perfect battery for your setup. Now, I've seen a question on social media about a guy was asking what is the best battery for his XI3 for his kayak. And there was a lot of guys that said 100, there was a lot of guys that said 80, there was quite a few guys that were saying 60s and so on. And we have talked with a couple different lithium battery manufacturers and what you get into is the amp draw that your motor is going to pull. Uh, that's big. So you know if you got a 30, 30 pound thrust um, Minn Kota, say it pulls anywhere between 35 to 40 amps, well, you got to be careful because if you run it for an, you know, an hour wide open, you're going to you're gonna drain it quickly, which a lot of times we don't do that. We don't run an hour wide open uh, on these. So, um, and you'll have a little bit left to go. Now, we'll say, like, for example, me and James, we had a uh, 50 pound, I mean, a 50 amp battery that we run on a 30 pound thrust on our bona fides. We did a three and a half mile ride way up the river, nonstop some spots with a lot of current um, and you know it took us about 45 minutes to an hour or something like that um, so but once we got up here we didn't need to motor no more come back down was able to fish a little bit and got about halfway and my battery died on me so that goes to show you right there that you know running wide open all that it'll get you there but coming back down if I needed any more I wasn't gonna have it so uh, we learned from that situation that I would have much rather gone with either a 60 to 80 on it not saying you need that because everybody some people just fish ponds or fish around their at their local lakes and they're not going far that will work all day on a, a lake because that's not a river situation where you got a lot of current you're pushing for a long period of time but when you go to a bow mount setup whether you're going with a Minn Kota Tarova or XI3 you want to go as big as you possibly can go that your budget will allow but also what is what is the right setup for your boat when it comes to size. I tell people do not go under an 80 uh, amp hour battery. Okay, so and the reason why I say that, when you get under 80, your motherboards change on your, your batteries, on most of the ones that we've talked to. It goes down to a smaller amperage board, um, all that. So we've, we've seen guys with 60s that run on an XI3. Yes, they do run, but it's like a lot of people that were comment was um, just make sure you don't go wide open for a long period of time. So, to me, that sounds that sounds crazy to me because you can get out there and go fishing. You start at the dock and you can work your way around the cut, out to the point, and you can get two, three miles up the lake. Well, then that thunderstorm comes in or that front comes in and the waves and the or the wind gets really bad and the waves get bad. Well, now you need to run wide open because it, you might not have enough speed to even get you over that stuff, get you through the waves, get you through the wind. So to me, I would play it safe and go as big as you possibly can go, but I wouldn't go under an 80. I mean, you know, I, I know I say I know these things are expensive. I know a lot of people got budgets when they build these things, and you can get up to a thousand dollars easy in a hundred amp hour. So, but like I say, when you're out there, that can be a life and death situation sometimes. Like say with the storm coming in, you ain't got enough juice to get you back home. So. Um, but also, like say, me and James, we was down at Chickamauga. I don't know how long we run these. I mean, it was all day. You're talking eight to 12 hour days of long runs from the end of a creek to the mouth of a creek uh, on several creeks, picking up, going to another creek and doing the same thing again in one day. Um, and we never had an issue. It never died on us. And we ran wide open. We were covering water. It was during practice. So we were, we were covering a lot of water. But like I say, I just want to get back onto the fact that you got to be careful going with too small of a battery for your setup that you got. And like I say, you will burn them up. I know some of these companies have great warranties, but when you start burning them up and you know, I can about guarantee you within a year to two years, it's going to be done. Okay. Some of these companies, 
or they all they offer an awesome warranty but it's only for one replacement okay so you might have it for six to twelve years depending on your company uh, once you do that one replacement say it goes bad you get uh, get a bad one in, in a couple months it, it's done it's fried it, sometimes they might not replace that so especially in the time we're getting where it's hard to get things so and plus you don't want to be on the water when this thing goes out on you so when it comes down to batteries just for trolling motors now I would say if you're going to go anything 55 pounds and up, I would go uh, 80 amp and up. Now, I, I would recommend 100, but an 80, an 80 will do about everything you need it to do. But 100 just gives you just that little bit more peace of mind. Um, when you're going down to your 30s and your 40s uh, pound thrust motors, I would say anywhere between a 50 to a 60. Um, that'll get you through sufficiently. I mean, that that, that should be plenty, um, especially if you're not, like say, you're not making... <clears throat> Sorry, if you're not making long trips anywhere, a 50 to 60 will do you just fine. I mean, we run a 50 forever um, with a 30-pound thrust motor. So, um, but also another thing to keep in mind too, when when people are talking about running like a 60-pound, I mean a 60-amp battery with an XI3, if you get in situations where you got a lot of grass, for instance, okay, now your breaker a lot of times will kick when you start getting when it starts getting galled up with grass or, or trash or anything like that. Your breaker a lot of times will kick. But for a while, it's going to be pulling really, really hard on your battery. And that right there is what can start frying motherboards. It can start messing up your battery and all that. And, and then really pulling your juice down. So um, when you start getting to your 80s and 100s, you get in there, it does kick your breaker. Or you're able to get it cleaned out in time. You're still going to have plenty of juice to run everywhere and do anything you need to do with it. So, um, But like I say, I mainly just wanted to clear this up. I see a lot of information out there. I didn't want to make this video super long. I just wanted to reach out to all you guys. That are just now starting to rig your kayaks or, or just now wanting you know you're getting away from lead acid and you're trying to you know buy a nice lithium um like i say 55 and up 80 to 100 um when you're getting into the 30 to 40 pound thrust motors i would stay 50 to 60 amp hour batteries so um and then when kind of getting into the graphs just a little bit i don't want to touch a lot with that because this is mainly for batteries but i mean uh for trolling motors um but when you get into graphs this right here this is a 40 by you know um, but what we're doing with this is we are running our um, power pole, we're running our lights, um, our fish finders, we're running a, a 360, well right now we're moved up to a 60 amp hour because we're going to be running our 360s and our panoptics and all that stuff on, on our boat. So, um, but, um, but if you're just doing your basic setup with a graph, with lights, power pole, all that, you can really get away with less. You can probably get away with like a 20 amp hour. Um, but, you know, if you want to have that extra, you're going on tournaments, you don't have accessibility to charge everything, um, you're going to be gone for a two-day uh, fishing trip, a 40 right here will last you last you several days out on the water with your graphs and lights and all that stuff. So, um, But if you got any more questions, I didn't touch base on something or something didn't make sense to you, please comment down below. Um, I, we're more than happy to answer any of your questions. You can also reach out to us at oneobjectivebf.com and shoot us an email and we'll try to point you in the right direction of what size battery you need for your uh, setup you have. So anyways, guys, hope this video helped you out. Uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share this video with your friends. Please be safe on the water and we'll talk to you later. See ya.